Welcome to the meeting of the Planning Board. Thank you. And I'd like to thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm going to read a list of names of the people who've sent all these letters, but the reason for the delay is that we got about 25 emails today. And some of them are lengthy, and it takes a while to read them. So the two people that were unable to read them at work are going to continue reading, and that's uh, through the beginning part of this. But we thank you for your patience. Uh, before I lead, read the list of everybody who sent them, I, are there any corrections or additions to the meeting, uh, to the minutes? Last, oops, remember, motion to accept the minutes. I, I move that we approve the meetings from uh, the minutes from the meeting in September. Seven. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. One extension. Okay. Right, so that's that. Um, we received, just so that everybody knows, a memorandum in our packet from Thomas Leahy, the town attorney, which had to do with the right to know law, conflicts of interest, and bias. So we are fully cognizant of what we do need to do and what we don't need to do. Right, as I said, we got approximately 25 emails today. And I'm just going to list the people who sent them I trust I am not leaving anybody out. So, okay. Carol Taylor, Michael Donahue, and Mary Jean Mork, Melissa and Chuck Redman, Catherine and Greg Miller, Jeff Bucci, Sarah Whitney. Leah Hobson, Ken Barber, Nancy G. Irving, Susan Samberg, Alicia Cummings, Barbara Wendell, Janice Rael Hatem, Anika Cook, Mary Burns, and LSR, Dan Fishbein, Carl Elliott Pearson, Gail Schmader, Lee Wilson, Matthew Reale. Liz Monahan, Vince and Id, oh, I'm going to mispronounce this. Kushinsky, thank you. Jane Parker, Jennifer Starr, and Eugene Lesser. So we thank everybody who wrote an email to us, and we are reading them currently, some of us, and the rest of us have read them all. So we do appreciate your participation. And we take seriously what you say. Right. Um, new business, Fort Williams Arboretum Site Plan. The Town of Cape Elizabeth requests site plan review to construct an arboretum in Fort Williams Park located off Shore Road. Please introduce yourself. I will. Um, I'm Catherine Bacasto, and I'm a member of the Ad Hoc Arboretum Committee. Chris Murray is here with me, and John Mitchell and Rick Churchill, who are the two other members, are not able to be here tonight. Um, we're here on behalf of the town of Cape Elizabeth and have the endorsement and support of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, town council, town manager, Fort Williams Charitable Fund, um, the town planner, and the public works department. And what we are seeking tonight is a formal site plan review uh, with the goal that we would obtain approval for the Arboretum project um, at next month's hearing with the public hearing. And uh, just to kind of review what we're talking about, this is an overall drawing of the um, fort. And highlighted in green are the proposed areas that would be planted. 
Um, the intent of the Arboretum is to ensure the natural beauty of Fort Williams Park um, by having um, a plan that would adhere to the master plan that was developed uh, some years ago to assure the, the continuity and um, beauty of the horticulture. Um, there are a lot of invasive plants and untended trees and whatever, and so our intent would not be to plant anything that was not already planted in vegetation, but really to clean up the vegetation, um, to have an overall plan to maintain what's there, um, and really to replant and ensure continuity. I mean, for example, the promenade that has oak trees, uh, many of them are old and tired, and if there aren't other ones planted underneath, um, it might not look the same in years to come. What we have is um, these 15 pockets, again, which are all planted now um, and would be, uh, would be planned and planted in a thoughtful way. And what we propose to do is have a demonstration site, which would be to take a portion of site B, which is um, at the back end, the northern end of the cliff walk, and plant that in, and this is the area that we're talking about, and plant it in phases as we obtain the funds to, um, and this again is the demonstration site, phase 1A and, and 1B. Um, and so it would be, uh, this is really to show you um, as an illustrative example of conceptually what each of these areas would be done, would be planted in. Um, each design going forward would uh, consider and accommodate the specific characteristics of the sites. Um, so that what we would like is to have the whole Arboretum uh, approved and all new sites would be reviewed by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission going forward and would be um, consistent with uh, the requirements of the town. So the, I guess what we'd like to know tonight is if there are any other issues which you on the planning board see um, which would delay <coughs> approval for this project. I, I don't think we do right now. But as I understand, this is just on for completeness and setting for public hearing. And having reviewed the plan and the materials, I don't think <coughs> there's no other issues we need to review as far as completeness. Um, I don't. I just wanted to recognize uh, Chuck Wilson, who's sitting in the audience. He's, I, I don't know if you're the chair of the Fort Williams Advisory Committee. I know he submitted a letter to the planning board regarding this project, and I just want to make sure you know he was here and he attended tonight in case he wanted to say something. I did have one question. If I understand it, you're asking us to improve, to approve, or this site plan would approve the entire arboretum. Yes. But in fact, we only have um, plans for paths and plantings and, and the specifics of drainage and grading and all of that for a very small portion of the project. So I guess I'm a little bit concerned that we're looking at a site plan, but we really only have detail for the demonstration portion of it. And so I guess I would be concerned about you know, approving the entire thing without some provision to come back as additional portions are developed and bring us the kind of drawings that you now have for the demonstration area. Um, our intention is to have everything that we do going forward reviewed and approved by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission um, and the town planner in terms of making sure that, that it is consistent with and uh, appropriate relative to the zoning requirements. But I'm not sure that, that those groups take into account all of the site plan issues that by ordinance the planning board's required to consider. That's my concern. But the, the, uh, the detail of that is sort of beyond what we would be looking at anyway in the detail of these plans. And we wouldn't be looking at planting detail and location of Pathways? Generally not of. with the outline that we have here. I mean, uh, we discussed this a little bit at the, uh, at the workshop, and my understanding was we were all comfortable with this approach for a cost, mostly because of cost, but that looking at the individual detail wouldn't be something we necessarily would change given 
uh, that the outline and the locations and the pathways are already set in in this plan. And, and, and right now what we're looking at is a complete a completeness issue and I, I, I was left with the clear impression that the workshop um, that we weren't going to be looking for a detail on each, on each particular uh, site. I guess on a, <clears throat> on a typical project that we do site plan review for, we would see that kind of detail for the entire project. And I guess my sense from the workshop was that we would hmm. have more of a sense other than just a green blob as to what was going to happen in the other areas. Well, and I guess that, um, and I don't know whether this helps you or not, but really this is intended to be illustrative and to give you the concept of this kind of detail that would go into um, each of the sites as we go forward. We can, you know, and when we get to the point of approval or not, we could bring some sort of condition in there that they have to renew it every year or bring forth three at a time or something along those lines. <coughs> I'm just trying to stay focused on what we have in front of us tonight, which is just the completeness issue. And I certainly don't think we're going to be looking for them to be complete to go through the detail of every single site, unless the board has some other sense. I don't see the point of that. I don't see the point of that expense. I don't either. I think I agree with Peter and, and would. Actually, I'd even go further than that. And that is that as long as the Fort Williams Advisory Committee is overseeing this project, I really don't have a problem with having an example and then going forward unless there were problems with drainage. Right. And then and we're not we hearing can deal the with that. Uh, we the can deal with that next time if right. we want to put a condition if there are problems with drainage. Well, and, and then probably from a practical standpoint, this is area, these are areas that have vegetation now and we're replacing it with other vegetation. So I would suspect that that probably wouldn't be an issue. We're, we wouldn't be disturbing the, the land in, um, in a broader sense. Um, we'd really be clearing it and then replacing it with plants that might be more appropriate, less invasive plants, um, that kind of thing. So it, it probably shouldn't be an issue, I would think. The, 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 only question, the only other question is the site walk. Normally in this situation, we would either deem it complete or not complete, set the public hearing, and decide whether we wanted a site walk. Is that, that's, Maureen, is that so yes. usual? Yes, absolutely. But uh, um, what the applicants are usually looking for, if you, after you deem this complete mm. and you decide whether or not you want to have a public hearing, whether or not you want to have a site walk, before you table it, you could stop for a minute and talk to the applicant about anything they ought to be prepared for next month. Are there things that are, are triggering concerns because they are hoping to take whatever you're saying and maybe adjust plans or somehow respond to your concerns so that they're prepared for next month. So I think that's what the applicant is trying to elicit from you. And we tend to just do complete and close it down. And right. Yeah. I guess that was the gist of my comment, Maureen, that, that the issues that affect drainage and, and other things for the other portions of the site and uh, I'd like to have some more indication on that and perhaps just some more awareness of the kind of review that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission together with the town is going to do just to have some assurance that our responsibility to look at all the factors of the site plan ordinance are in fact attended to not only for this first portion but for all the portions coming along. And let me say, I think this is a fantastic thing to do. I think it's certainly to the benefit of the town and the park and to do it as efficiently as possible with all of the donations we're going to make is certainly in everyone's interest. And I understand that. I just want to make sure that we're looking at the things that by statute we're required to look at. Right. I would also make a note that um, we did have not only John Mitchell but Skip Murray review the all of the sites and the plan and he built the original two cliff walks so he has um, drawn up a plan for all the drainage erosion control issues for that all of the sites that are are proposed so uh, they so you have plans beyond area B not specific for plantings for you to look at because that will come up at, for the advisory committee as each phase is underway because this will take a lot of years to do but, but in terms of the drainage and those yes. you do are, well, perhaps if you could bring some of that information, okay. that would be very helpful. Okay. Okay. 
Anybody have any other questions? Anybody? Um, so I guess we ought to decide whether we need a site walk and whether we need a public hearing. Yeah, the completeness. Right. Oh, you want a motion first? Go ahead. A motion for completeness. All right, Peter. I move that uh, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth, a site plan review to establish an arboretum on 15 selected sites in Fort Williams, located on Shore Road, and be deemed complete. Second. All in favor? I got to tell you, I have no reason to have a site walk in Fort Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty familiar. Anybody feel like they need a site walk to see these sites? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about a public hearing? Oh, of course. Yes. It's a public spot. Okay. So we will have a public hearing next time. If you could bring any additional information you have, especially about drainage, because that probably is one of the, I can't think of much else that would affect this in too many ways other than drainage. Okay. Because we're not talking about really any other changes other than planting. So just bring that in with you. I think that'll be sufficient. Does anybody have anything else they want to uh, put in? Um, in? I was just talking to Maureen, who thought that perhaps Mr. Wilson might have some information about the Fort, Wilson, uh, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, which we could either take now or we could do it next, next month, but I don't know if he's going to be here next month. The first thing I want to I want to say uh, is that we look at this as an opportunity for the town to uh, help us meet our agriculture plan, which is part of the Fort Wayne Master Plan, which talks about all the different uh, issues with the agriculture in the fort. One of the things that's happening to us is that the trees. Uh, are growing older. We just lost a huge tree by the bandstand and we're trying to develop a plan to be in a position that when we start to lose the aging trees that we'll have some trees planted ready to fill those vacancies consistent with what's there now. That becomes a money issue. And then the second thing is the uh, invasive species which are just going rampant throughout the fort, and we're trying to deal with that. The bittersweet is out of control, poison ivy is a problem. And when they came to us with this idea, we said, wow, what a marvelous way to be able to uh, take some of the spots in the fort and be able to uh, improve them and have them for years going forward, and perhaps without an impact on the taxpayer. So. Uh, the, the key thing is this meets, the, if you look at the, four, uh, the Fort Williams Master Plan and the Fort Williams Agriculture Plan, which have been, uh, they're in the town hall, uh, and the details are very, very complete about these specific areas. What this group has done is they've gone and they've done what they call bubbles. I guess it's a bubble? Bubble, is that diagram. bubble diagram. Which they identified specific areas and the Fort Williams Advisory Committee agreed were consistent with our existing plans that needed to be somewhat cleared and replaced and a vegetation that was there replaced with things that are indigenous to the area. So what we asked them to do was to do a demonstration project because this, the term arboretum sometimes makes people nervous. Uh, because they think it's, it's going to take away from what the park is all about. And uh, so we said, let's do a demonstration project so the public can see firsthand what it is we plan to do. This whole area, right at the beginning of the, uh, the uh, shore walk, is full of uh, primarily bittersweet, but a whole bunch of other stuff too that we've tried to cut out and take out and, and uh, continue to clean it up. And what they're going to do is, part of their project, they're going to provide the funds, they're going to clean this area out. And some people may get a little bit nervous when they first do it because it's going to somewhat look like a, a, a clear cut uh, for a short time until we can get the new plantings in and get them stabilized. And so that, that's the process that we're going through. As I say, the master plan is already in place. Uh, 
and I would believe it, it may have even come to the, the uh, planning board at some point, but it, uh, no, I don't know, I'm looking. It kind of almost came it did, like three it did. or four times, but never really. Yeah, but it, it certainly was adopted by the council and, and, and move forward. So we're working off of that as our base plan. What they're doing is they're doing the specifics on each one of these things. This is probably the largest single area that they're looking at. Everything else is a little smaller, they're little clusters. Uh, so it, the important thing I think is that we're going to be managing this. It's going to take a number of years uh, before we get there. Uh, and I, we may have some drainage issues during the actual construction piece, but I think when it's done, we'll improve it. It's going to actually be better than what's there now. Uh, interesting side piece is we're working on some interpretive displays. Uh, and they're currently up on the top of Battery Knoll, which is the, the main knoll opposite the parade field. We're replacing them, and because the vegetation has grown beyond control, we're going to have, we're moving it. We're going to move the display because if you stand there and you look at the, the display and then you try to look out and see what you're seeing, you can't see it anymore because the bittersweet and all the other junk that's up there has just overrun the place. So part of the problem is managing that and uh, that, that's really what we're trying to do. And when you have somebody that comes in and says, we'd like to help you do this, it, we found it very difficult to say no because it was a good idea at the right time. Uh, and now we're hopeful that we can make it work. But I think the important thing is to see what this does. Uh, we're hoping that once people see what happens here, the enthusiasm of the public in the town uh, and maybe some donors will come along and help us move forward but uh, we're going to be managing each each little piece as it goes along if i understand it uh correct me if i'm wrong maureen i think it was the planning board that asked to look at all the things instead of just one uh, but I, I i wasn't here so i don't know i think when um, i met with john mitchell yeah. um, there was a discussion about showing the planning board the entire package versus just one area. And the whole thing went to you at a workshop. And I think, as Peter said, the proposal was, was pitched that we can get approval for just this one piece or we can request approval for the whole thing, um, using this first step as the demonstration of, you know, illust illustrative of all the other places. And I guess that the, we'll need to kind of come to grips with that and whether they are comfortable with that. This is a little different from a private site plan. I was going to say, what's the what's standards that we're using here? don't have further review by the Fort Williams Advisory. Right. <laughs> so there is kind of that stop gap. Well, we're not managing traffic or any of the other traditional things we do on a private. Actually, that was one of the things I wanted to ask because I saw in this package here that there was some discussion about having to pay attention to um, the patterns of pedestrian traffic that we're going to be encouraged because you're opening up this area. Is that something that you as the advisory commission would look at as each of these other areas are opened, whether the new arboretum is going to increase or change where pedestrian traffic goes and how that's going to be handled? Well, yeah, you're going to have to because if you put, if you put trees in here and the purpose of an arboretum is for people to go and see the different plantings, and we'd have to make sure that there is adequate walkways to go through the area. That's part of the, that's part of the function that the John Mitchell and the, and the ad hoc committee are supposed to be doing. And crosswalks in terms of uh, where people are, would be, go across the various access roads. All, currently, all of the places that we're looking at are right on the existing main walkways, and that was designed that way so that we wouldn't be changing the patent significantly. Um, it, it's, it's walking traffic that you're going to see, mostly. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank uh, you for your consideration. We does can, anybody else have any questions or anything like that?
Okay, then we have uh, the rest. I move that the uh, Fort Williams Arboretum site plan application be tabled to the regular November 18th, 2008 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. All in favor? Thank you. See you on the 18th. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please call Maureen. Okay, the next matter of business on the agenda is the BA Zoning and Wetlands Amendments. The Planning Board will consider amendments that refocus the Business A District as a neighborhood business district, amend the Property A District boundaries, and reduce the RP1 wetland buffer to 100 feet for properties served by public sewer and water, Section 19-10-3, amendments to the Zoning Ordinance public hearing. Before we... Um, start the public hearing, we're going to ask, Maureen's put together a, a little um, PowerPoint presentation so that you can actually see everything before we get started, which seems to be a good way to start because this is pretty large and comprehensive. And then um, we will have the public hearing and then afterwards the planning board will I hope discuss the sticky points so we can come to a decision tonight. Maureen, go up. You're on. Yes. Uh, I just, I, it's not up yet because, of course, it's waiting. Uh, but I just wanted to start by making sure everybody is aware that I know we had some calls today about cor correspondence to the planning board. And uh, I don't know how many people are aware, but the planning board is not allowed to have any private conversations about projects that are before them. And for that reason, we do not put the planning board's email addresses on the town's website. Uh, what we do instead is we ask people to send their emails to me. I do not censor or filter anything. Uh, all I do is I turn it around and send it to the board. And what that does is it makes it possible for all of the board members to have the same information. It also makes it possible for me to put a copy of every piece of correspondence in the public file. So uh, if you're wondering why you're, you're not getting to go directly to the board, you are. It's just I'm kind of like the clearinghouse for all of that. And if anyone is concerned that your correspondence isn't making it to the board, feel free to come to the town office. You can review the public file. If it's not in that file, then you need to tell me immediately because I will make sure they do get that information. So uh, with that, the other thing I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of is that in Cape Elizabeth, the review process for changing the ordinance is that the planning board acts in an advisory capacity to the town council. Um, you elect the town council, and the town council is the only body that is authorized to uh, change ordinances or adopt ordinances. The land use ordinances, specifically the subdivision ordinance and the zoning ordinance, uh, there's a requirement that before the planning, before the council can consider an amendment to that ordinance, those ordinances, they need to give the planning board an opportunity to advise them. And that's what the planning board does. They, they will take an ordinance. Usually they do most of the drafting work. Uh, they are required to hold a public <coughs> hearing, and then they make a recommendation to the council. Once the, council, once the planning board is done with their recommendation, pretty much the process kind of starts all over again because the council accepts the planning board's recommendation and they send it to their own subcommittee called the ordinance committee. The ordinance committee also meets, they review or, the, the ordinance amendments. They almost always make some kind of change to it. Um, and then they send it back to the town council and the town council must hold another public hearing before they can consider a vote for adoption. And the reason I just went through all that is I just want to make sure you all know is that tonight's not your only shot at it. Um, and if you're happy with the way the amendment looks tonight, that doesn't mean you can, you know, forget about it because the council is very hands-on on amendments. They always make their own changes. Um, so if you're very interested in this item, you definitely want to keep, keep on track with it. All right, everybody cross your fingers. And it's still not coming up. No idea why.
Is it plugged in? Yeah, we're going then. Appears to, appears to be. Anyway, okay, what I hope to have tonight is to actually have the text up in front of you, so of course it's not working. Uh, but let me go over the text, and it is on the town's website, the entire set of text. The main reason that the planning board is working on the business A uh, changes is because the council adopted a new comprehensive plan last year, and there are 91 recommendations in that comprehensive plan. Approximately one-third of them are identified as high priority, which means they have to be done in the next three years. So what we're doing is we're taking similar or similar recommendations from the comprehensive plan and putting them into packages. And the planning board actually has five packages of land use amendments they need to get through the next three years. And this is the first one. Uh, it was identified as the highest priority for a variety of reasons. But the overall concept for this is to take the business A districts, and there are two of them, one located on Shore Road near the South Portland boundary line, and the other one on Route 77, starting around the intersection of, Bo of Broad Cove Road, ending around the intersection of uh, the Kettle Cove takeout. And those two business areas are what we call the business A district. Business A district hasn't been meaningfully rewritten in at least 20 years. Uh, just to give you a point of reference, the town center was rewritten in 1995. So there were a lot of things that were done um, that were innovative in the town center in 95, and it seems like most of them have been well received, and it seems that it's time to take some of those ideas and bring them into those other business districts. But in in their own unique way. So the idea is to take the business district regulations that we have right now, which in my opinion are very generic. Um, you could find them in half a dozen towns anywhere, and to really reformulate them as a neighborhood business district to reflect that those areas really aren't supposed to be major attractors for region-wide commerce, which is really what the regulations look like right now. They're supposed to be much more tailored toward the neighborhood. For example, the current regulations have no design standards at all. Um, anyone could propose a building in one of those districts, and the planning board has almost no authority to regulate the look of the building. Um, and that's just one of the issues that the board has tried to deal with. Uh, but the regulations right now change the purpose statement for the business A district. So it specifically says it's a neighborhood-oriented business district. That's the first thing, and that's really, a, the purpose statement is important because it's what you keep going back to when you're checking to see whether or not the rest of the regulations hang together well. Uh, the second thing that they've done is they've added some definitions. There's already a definition for cottage industry manufacturing. They've uh, made it a little bit more specific to say that you need to have uh, no more than, I think it's no less than 25% of an area for cottage industry manufacturing has to be devoted to retail use. The intent of that is to try to make sure that we're not using the Business A District as our de facto industrial zone. It's supposed to be a place where potters can make pottery, um, but not a place where you're manufacturing a ton of stuff. Uh, the restaurant definition that is currently in the ordinance has also been revised. That specifies, and there's been a lot of issues with this lately, that, no, uh, that less than 50% of the income from a restaurant has to come, shall come from alcohol, that no more than eight counter seats can be located in a restaurant, and further that you cannot have a restaurant be open after no, neat, no seating service or organized gathering shall be allowed outside after 9 p.m. And keep in mind that restaurant definition is town-wide. It's not just in the Business A district. Um, the other thing we've done is we've gone over the per permitted uses list. The permitted uses are eliminating a lot of things that were in there before that didn't really seem appropriate. Um, a lot of the things that are being promoted, pr promoted as permitted uses now are very similar to the town center at their, in that they're intended to be small-scale retail, small-scale office. Um, <coughs> not the kind of thing that you would probably find on Route 1 in other communities. Uh, there's been some additional performance standards added. A lot of those performance standards, I think, are try to address some of the issues that have been, uh, re that have been addressed and that have been raised by the public. Um, there's, a there's, a there's an emphasis on um, trying to minimize the amount of new driveways. 
uh, try to do some shared driveways. Uh, there's a restriction on how large a building can be. If you have a large building, you can only expand the footprint by another 2,000 square feet. Some of the setback standards have changed. Right now, there's no restriction in the business aid district on how large a building can be except for setbacks. In the town center, the maximum building footprint is 5,000 square feet. And in the business A district, a smaller, set, a smaller maximum footprint, I think it's 4,000 square feet, is proposed. So those are some of the restrictions. Uh, one of the other things that I, I want to point out, because I know a lot of people are interested in this, is that um, there was a concern about how late businesses, particularly restaurants, can be open. And the restriction says uh, not no outside events after 9 p.m. That's town-wide. In addition, uh, there's a performance standard that states that establishments shall not be open to customers between the hours of 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Sunday through Thursday. So the regular work week, um, businesses have to close at 10. On the weekends, uh, they have to close at 11. Uh, there was a concern by the planning board that some people may want to be able to be open for a New Year's Eve party or a special Super Bowl event or whatever. So the board has also made it possible that establishments may be open up to three times a year till 12.30 p.m. if they provide written notice, 12.30 a.m., thank you, um, if they provide written notice to the code officer at least a week in advance. And the written notice is primarily so that you can keep track that they're not abusing that 12.30 a.m. closure. Uh, the rest of the ordinance, I think, really has a lot of uh, standards, design standards, which would look really good if I could project them, but they're not working. Uh, but what the board has done is they've borrowed some of the design standards that already exist for the town center They've changed some of those. They've discarded some of them because they don't fit for a neighborhood commercial area. And then we've added some new standards. In particular, we've drawn up some new standards for the shore, the um, Route 77 area. The characteristic, thank you, Barbara. The char we're, we're talking about the Shore Road business district as being more of a compact neighborhood area, and that the Shore Road, the um, Route 77 area is more of a seaside or beach commercial area. So the standards are a little different. One of the examples is that in Shore Road, we require so sidewalks. Um, on Route 77, the, the concept is a more fluid, more relaxed idea of meandering pedestrian paths. So the idea is you still need to deal with pedestrians, but not in the structured way that you have on Shore Road. Um, there are two other things that we want to go over. One of them is, um, in this package, is a proposal that looks at the wetland buffer, and this has been discussed a couple of times. Right now, the town has a requirement for, the, for properties in the, uh, with, within, in the RP1 district. There's a 250-foot buffer from the upland edge of the RP1 wetland, and RP1 wetlands are the very wet wetlands. There, is four, there are four ways you can get that 250-foot buffer reduced to 100 feet. And the proposal is to add a fifth criterion. And that one would be in the business aid district, if your property is connected to public water and public sewer, you would be able to have the buffer reduced from 250 feet to 100 feet. This is, for the most part, consistent with some of the other ways that you can get the buffer reduced from 250 to 100 feet. And the reason that it works, um, it actually is necessary in this district, and Barbara's put up a map, good, at least my little. If you can see this heavy red line here, which kind of gets yellow because we were running out of blue ink, um, <laughs> this is the 250-foot buffer. And then you can see this line right here. This covers almost, almost all of the business aid district on Route 77. And if you were to leave that 250-foot buffer in place, you're, you're, you're seriously compromising the essential viability of that as a business district because people can't make any changes at all. Um, they can't change the uses in their building. They certainly can't expand the footprint of their building or the square footage of their building, even if they go up. If you reduce the buffer to 100 feet, there's a, a lighter red line. You can see this right here. This is the RP1 wetland right in here. And if you reduce the buffer to 100 feet, what it does is it pulls that buffer back to here. Um, 
it leaves, frankly, it leaves the good table as an existing non-conforming structure and a non-conforming use. But the Rudy's property um, does have some opportunity to expand and make some changes. Um, ag again, the Agway property down in here gets pulled a lot further out of that, that red line. So there are several properties. There are all of these properties here that are in the business A get pulled out of that 250-foot buffer. So it does have an impact. Um, the idea of, to, of doing it wasn't, however, just because it helped out those business properties. The idea was that all of those properties I just mentioned have septic systems, and almost all of the septic systems are behind the properties immediately adjacent to the wetland area. And that's why there's the, the trade-off that if you reduce the buffer to 100 feet, you have to connect to public sewer. And the thought was, without, pure, without specific empirical evidence, that there would be some environmental benefit to a wetland if you no longer had a, sub, a septic system immediately adjacent to it. And then the last two things we have are two map amendments. And again, I can't pull those up. But in the Route, 70, in the Route 77 Business A District, the map amendment is essentially to take two uh, residential properties that have little slivers of the lots in the business zone and rezone those little slivers to residential. So there's actually a small reduction in the size of the business district for the Route 77 area. For Shore Road, there is a small expansion. Well, there is an expansion. There's a property on the water side of Shore Road, um, on the southern end of the of um, the Business A District owned by Terra LLC, and that property is proposed to be rezoned into the Business A District. So with that, I'm going to finish, and unless anyone has any questions. Anybody have anything to add? Well, there's one other proposal that's on in terms of adding one property to. No. No. No, there are, are no other proposals. Right. That, that's it, just adding that one property. And I would like to say that I found one more letter, so I will. This one was handwritten and by Gary Cummings. So if Gary Cummings is here or listening, we didn't miss you. We did get it. Just wasn't in the list because I only got the email list. Okay, anybody else have anything they want to add before we open the public hearing? All right. Um, if all of you are going to speak, I'm going to ask everybody to please limit their comments to no more than about three minutes. Just say what you feel is relevant and pertinent. And if you want to say the same thing the person in front of you said, just say ditto. Oh, thank you. Uh, the public hearing is now open. When you come up, please say your name and address slowly as they will be written down. And if necessary, we'll ask you for your spelling. Thank you very much. Yes. M E N three Charles Road, Cape Elizabeth. And I emailed through Maureen uh, my points to you about ten days ago. Did, they weren't listed, so I. No, I, I'm sorry, but I we have a whole stack oh, that had come fine. in earlier, and I just didn't list those. Only the ones that came in with a lat in the last three or four days. So that's fine. We did read it. We did get it. Okay. I actually have them all with. Me. Well, uh, in my email, I objected to the changing of 553 Shore Road from residential to business. It adversely affects my property as well as my household because I'm, though I'm not adjacent to it, I could throw a baseball from my back porch and bounce it off the second story uh, side of the house. So. Uh, and I've been here before, and I voiced my consternation with the fact that people there are in the past, even though they weren't loud because of the proximity, they were objectionably noisy uh, to our household. The other thing that I wanted to point out that wasn't in my email is, is that instead of expanding that business zone through there, it's, it's, it's all residential. My concern is, is why aren't you reducing the business zone and making more residential? And uh, that's it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. 
My name is Emily Matterson, and I live at 2 Charles Road, and I'd like to speak on behalf of the uh, Sanfords who live at 1. They're away. They would be here, but they're away on a long planned trip. The property of 553 uh, Shore Road is embedded in the property of 1 Charles Road. There's very little. Uh, I know you've gotten a letter from the Sanford, and you've gotten one from me and my husband also, and we strongly object to this rezoning. Um, this is a heavily residential area. It's a historic area. It's the oldest neighborhood in Cape Elizabeth. It's the entrance to Cape Elizabeth for most visitors to our town. Most people go to Fort Williams. They have to go by this area. There's no differentiation between South Portland and the entrance to Cape Elizabeth. And I, I'd like to ask the town, where do you want Cape Elizabeth to begin visually? Where? I mean, what part is deemed nice enough to be Cape Elizabeth? Why should we have an encroachment of businesses where we really don't need one? This is the only property that could be rezoned unless the property values of the homeowners around there fall so that the only possibility would be for them to have businesses there. The uh, side yard of Dave of the Sanfords, excuse me, but, um, these are the houses that would be most directly impacted. The side yard of the Sanfords property is really on that little triangle of land that's made by Shore Road and Charles Road. You might want to point it out on that map in the back of you so everybody can see it. Well, I think the names are on the map too. It's okay. You can see how this is embedded in the Sanfords property, the lines, the stripes. This is the Sanfords, and this is the proposed rezoning. I mean, it's right there. This is the parking, uh, the garage and the parking lot for the Sanfords property. This is a triangle. This is all tree. The Sanfords house is actually right over here in the corner of their lot. This is all tree as is the property of the Brazels, who live across the street from the Sanfords. This is all treed. It's lovely. These are lovely. These treed properties serve as a big buffer, visually, for the residents of Charles Road to the urban gas station and to the other commercial. This is a very small commercial area. There's only two storefronts on the west side of Shore Road. And for some reason, I think maybe when Spectrum Building was built, the property next door to that got rezoned, and the woman who owns that property didn't know that it was rezoned commercial. That's a residence. It's a three-family residence, but it is a residence. Um, we all would be very, very detrimentally impacted by a rezoning of this property. And I think that the realtor at the time the property was sold did say, because I heard him say it myself, that this whole area was going to be rezoned business. And whether that had any impact on the purchase of it or not, I don't know. But it was a residence when it was purchased. And the person now wants to have it rezoned. The person doesn't live in the area. It's only for their own mercenary gain. And actually, we all live there. We're longtime residents. We've been in our house for 37 years. A lot of people on our street have been there longer. And it doesn't seem fair that we should all be inconvenienced just so that somebody can realize the mercenary gain from our neighborhood. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Ed Matterson, uh, 2 Charles Road, New Elizabeth. I, everything my wife said is true, and uh, particularly the, the thing about the fact that that's embedded and that, that, that David Sanford's property is almost like a park. It's a, it's for us, it's a tremendous buffer against the visual view of the gas station and so forth. Uh, and the bad thing that I can see is that if that house, which is a lovely house, was rezoned as business, down the road it could become something else. Uh, if David Sanford decides it's not to his uh, benefit to be living next to a business, he might sell. If he sells, I can, I can envision that park might become a parking lot. It, the whole thing has a, has a domino effect, which is, is very displeasing to me. And as, I, as you can see from the photos that I had made, uh, these are houses that are well-maintained and uh, 
we, we all live there very long and we take very good care of our property and uh, we definitely don't want to have even the beginning of that kind of a change. It would definitely impact our well-being and our welfare. Uh, in our case, the, our house is our primary investment and if that went down, that would have a tremendous negative impact on our welfare. I would also like to ask, can the town arbitrarily rezone uh, something from a business, from a residence to a business? Not arbitrarily. We have to have public hearings. It has to go to the town okay. council. Uh, are we, the adjacent people, supposed to be notified? Because one person got a notification, we didn't. Check right We're checking. Okay. If I understand it, for zoning amendments, there is no requirement of notification. Is that right? For amendments, there no, there right. there is no there is no requirement for a mailed first class notice. Like there like for a pro like for a project. Right. No. Th right. There. If there's a text amendment, the requirement is that it needs to be published in the newspaper. And ever, effort needs to be made. It needs to be uh, posted in the town hall. <coughs> for a map amendment, there needs to be a notice mailed to properties that are going to be affected. That's okay. the properties that are being rezoned. I see. Not necessarily the properties abutting rezoning. I see. But give me a moment to check. No, sure. Uh, well, while you're checking that, the other thing is uh, uh, the comprehensive plan, as you said, you, you're happy with the way the town center is. I, I, I'm puzzled by being happy about the town center because I've never seen a town that had only once one side of the street be a business area. And if you're going to concentrate the, uh, the expansion in the business areas, why is the whole east side of 77 just a park? I don't quite get that. I mean, that's maybe irrelevant, but to me it seems very relevant. If you're going to take and make this little tiny area be more of a business than the town center. Thank you very much. We'll get you your answer, but we'll take the next person in, in the interest of time. Oh, wait, we have the answer right here. Mr. Madison, are you a direct abutter to the Business A District? A direct abutter? No. No. That, anyone who owns property that is immediately adjacent to that pink area on the map over there. Because I don't show you as a direct abutter, which would be why we would not have sent you a notice. We're right here. Yeah. Right. right. So you don't. Your property doesn't touch anything. So that's the reason we didn't get a notice. That's the reason you didn't get a notice. I am not direct abutter, and I have the postage stamp. Copy. Actually, Mr. Ooh. Pop, according to my map, you are a direct abutter. I'm told I'm not going to call town hall. So I would appreciate if somebody could add it. Well, I sent. I have the notice right here, <clears throat> and it shows that your property abuts the Savoy property. And the Savoy property has a little tiny corner that is pink. May, 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 sir, we need to get people to rec get recognized yes, at the podium before they speak. And I'm not saying you can't. It's just we need to get the record straight, all right? I, I believe there were folks waiting to speak. Oh. Oh, go right ahead. Oh. Please introduce yourself. Lee, well, I'm Lee Wilson. I live at 82 Two Lights Road, but I am um, one of the owners of the property in question, this one, 553 Shore Road. Um, and I think that you probably all know my story through the emails and from previous meetings and the comprehensive plan meetings. What the um, neighbors um, across the street from Charles Road are saying is true. That is, this is the oldest neighborhood. It's a gorgeous neighborhood. However, it has always been dense. It's the nature of the neighborhood, and it's always been a business neighborhood. Not always, but for quite some time. Um, the house that we own has been there since 1900, um, and it's been a residence since 1900. Um, one lady owned it for most of those years, and as Maureen said, uh, it just has not been rezoned, and for no other reason that no one has gone to rezone it from residential to business. Slowly but surely, um, the business district has evolved as a quaint little neighborhood business, but all the while, this house had had no prior reason to go through these efforts to get rezoned. If you stand on my front porch and look out, all you see is business. All you see is tarmac. You see the cookie jar, which looks like it's going to be um, coming back and you see the fire station, which is very noisy um, in the middle of the night. 
You see the gas station? Um, and the buffers on David's property, the trees, the buffer, is wonderful. But that doesn't affect my property. I have some wonderful trees too. Um, we all upkeep our homes. We put in a lot of money in the last two years to do so to this house that was starting to fall down. Um, so we've been a great neighbor, and we hope to continue to be a great neighbor, but this house naturally is better suited as a business property. Um, the noise isn't going to change. I mean, whatever we do there as a business is not going to be huge. The house is not going to change. There are not going to be any revisions or renovations that make it into some huge business. It can't and it won't, and I can promise that. Um, and so I like what you've done so far. I appreciate what you've done so far. I also think Town Center is looking good, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next person, please. Hi, my name is Hughes Kraft. I live at 41 Warren Avenue. I also oppose the um, moving the residential into the um, business district there at 533, 553 Shore Road. It is a very, as people have mentioned, it is a very historic neighborhood. Um, there obviously is some businesses there. My concern is that if we grant some more space for some more business there, it's going to lead to um, a, a slippery slope of sorts where we are going to have more and more businesses and take away from a, a truly special neighborhood, historic-wise, as well as rent residential-wise in this neighborhood. Um, I support a tight business district, but just not there. You know, why can't we focus more on um, central, in, in, in the center of town here? Or also acknowledge that close by we have Meeting House Hill, which is becoming quite a destination spot. You know, they have an art walk there now. And also Mill Creek is right down the road, too. So I, I you know, what we're looking at is maybe kind of expanding this whole business district that goes from Casco Gate Bridge up all the way to um, the entrance to Fort Williams, which I just um, don't support at all. I support tight business districts where you can park and walk. You know, we don't need more parking lots. Um, we don't need more moving traffic. We need to park cars so people can get out and walk and, and frequent businesses. We're running the risk of just stretching, again, a business zone that's, um, that just runs the risk of um, adding to sprawl. Um, to that end, we don't need to turn this end of Shore Road into Cape Elizabeth's version of Portland's Forest Avenue or Route 1 in Falmouth. You know, just you know, more businesses, um, eyesores. Also, I've been in the neighborhood for about 14 years now. Um, I have three kids in the neighborhood. When any, when I've I talk to anybody outside within other neighborhoods of Cape Elizabeth, they always know about our neighborhood because it's very tight. There's kids running around. It's kind of a neighborhood of yesteryear where there is kids in the neighborhood. Neighbors know each other. They say, they say hi to each other. There's lots of um, neighborhood going on. And it's a very special place for that reason alone. So, you know, I think we really need to hold on to this segment and this section of um, Cape Elizabeth for that reason in itself. So thank you. Thank you. Next person, please. I want to thank you for giving me some time tonight. My name is Stephen Pop. I live at 10 Woodland Road, and I'm happy to learn that I am in a butter. Um, the issue at hand um, baffles me. I'm absolutely baffled coming to this chamber. I've been to chambers in 48 states in this nation, and I've never seen a body, a municipal body, push so much for one issue. I, I, I question what the relationship is between this planning board and this one particular property because it keeps coming back. And you know, we're being told as citizens, come hell or high water, this change is going to be made. Well, you have a job, and your job, you work for us. The town works for us. This building is our building. Okay? It is a balance. You are supposed to take that balance. You are the stewards of that balance. And you have to make sure that the interests of not one person's commercial interests outweigh that of the residents. The reminder which I did, the, the notice which I did receive, with this we took and we copied your exact language. Prior to speaking to an attorney, the attorney said, just simply draft up a, a petition. 
After that, calling the attorney, then he said, take the exact language. Going door to door. If you look at this small map, it's, it's balance. Now, I'm going to speak a little slow now. Balance, if you look at this, the yellow spot that is in the middle is the one property that we're referring to, which was purchased as a residential property. Now, the broker did stand there at the time because we have witnesses. I was there also. And I'm a retired justice. I'd be happy to attest in court of law to this, that this entire area will be rezoned commercial. Now, if this town wants to indemnify this owner, pay this owner for the said property, relocate this owner to another town or to another property in town, equal value if, it were, if she were misled, that's fine. That's your choice. But the issue that is at hand is this property was purchased as a residential property, like your properties. Now, if you're willing to allow your property next to you and the health and welfare and safety of your children and your neighborhood be affected by this, Sign off on it. Sign a document that says you will allow your homes this to be done. Why is this little quaint neighborhood, this most photographed lighthouse in the world, little quiet neighborhood, have to be expanded? We should be reducing it. We now have a movement with the neighbors where we're going to reduce the zone, not expand it. Okay? We want to reduce it. The cookie jar sat vacant for almost two years. No need. We had, you know, we've had a business that started out in Mr. Duvall's building that went from five businesses or four businesses now to one. There's no need there to increase anything. There's a need to reduce it, and we want it reduced. We want you to look at this map. It's easy to understand. Yellow wants something that they don't have. Green, and several houses are not on this, oppose it. There are others that oppose it that can't be present because they have wives, they have children, and they have lives. In terms of notice, when I call City Hall, I'm told I'm not, in, when I call here, I'm not in a butter. Yet tonight I'm told that I am in a butter. Either way, I question, why are you having us come back over and over for this issue? until you can get what you want. We're not asking people to come back. You've over, come, no, over we've come back. I've come into this chamber over this issue four times, ma'am. I don't, I don't think okay? so. Okay? <laughs> yeah, we have. You can mix it up and you can, you can marry it into everything else. It's very, very convenient to do. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, it's a residential neighborhood. It's a residential property. It was purchased that way. This woman knows exactly what she did when she purchased the property. She purchased a residential property at a very good price because it needed considerable you know, amount let's of work. Just, we're only going to talk about the Five generalities and not point fingers at people, please. And I've asked for no more than three minutes because there are okay. a lot of other people. Then what I'm going to do is use the remainder of my few seconds. Well, seconds. Okay. To give you, or I'll supply you with copies of the signatures of these folks that signed a letter that are in opposition. Thank you. So that you can read those and understand that is all of the neighborhood that surrounds it. So this is a pretty elemental thing. You can understand this one. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We are reasonably intelligent. I hope so. But I do question. It's a little insulting to have people Evening. call us it is not It is insulting to have us dragged in this chamber over and over Thank you. and our tax dollars Next used this way. speaker, please. Thank you. That's what's insulting. Thank you. Uh, my name is Morris Kreitz. I live at the other end of town at uh, 524 Ocean House Road. Um, I have two concerns. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, this planning board. This is, I know that this has been a long process um, trying to rewrite this uh, BA zone, and it sometimes gets contentious. Um, I have two concerns. Uh, the first one speaks to the same issue that, that the people from, from who have spoken before mentioned. I'm concerned about the um, um, thought of expanding the business zones. Uh, I don't 
understand that there's a need for these BA zones to become larger than they are. And I'm also um, concerned that, that changes can happen, that, that a property might be rezoned from residential to business um, to the detriment of, of other people in the neighborhood. I would hope that the, that the process that's required in order to have a, a property rezoned from residential to business is one that involves, um, that, that allows a lot of public input um, uh, because it's a big step. And once a, once a property is rezoned as a business property, uh, even though it might be done with one particular use in mind, that property then can be used for any use that's permitted in the business zone. It's a big step and shouldn't be taken lightly. My other concern um, has to do with the, the new definition of restaurant. Um, I know that, that an effort has been made to balance uh, the concerns of, of different people, but I just need to state one more time that uh, I don't think that a neighborhood business zone uh, needs to have the option open of having a drinking establishment that's open until 11 o'clock at night on weekends, 10 o'clock at night during the week. I don't think that's compatible with the neighborhood zone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Glenn Prentice, 18 Ocean <coughs> Avenue, Cape Elizabeth. Me, I didn't hear you. Okay, Glenn Prentice, Thank you. 18 Ocean Avenue. My first question, is this a package? I mean, is it that if you agree to the uh, overall issue, you have to agree to the residential change? No, we'll, we'll be discussing different parts and uh, perhaps changing things that yeah, uh, my hope is that we can get through this tonight. We have spent a long time on this, believe me, okay. and make the changes that we feel need to be made based on comments that have been made here and considerations that we've given it and move it on to the town council, yeah. which would be the next step. Well, I didn't even know about this till last night. I'm not in a butter although I'm in the neighborhood. So I, I would say, first of all, it's a shame that you don't notify neighborhoods, because neighborhoods are affected, not just the butters. Well, a lot of this came from the comprehensive yeah. plan. To but I, uh, I, I'm glad I don't live near One Shore Road. I, I would be shocked if, I mean, that really is in a neighborhood, it seems to me. So I would like to suggest, I, I, know, I don't know how you would do it, but maybe you should have buffer zones around neighborhoods as well as around wetlands. <laughs> so that you can't treat it like there's, I mean, there's more than one kind of pollution, let's face it. It's not all water. So that, that's just my feeling is that it would be uh, horrific to be a, when somebody lived across the street or right next door, right behind that. I just can't believe you would, that that would be allowed. It just seems uh, like uh, invasive to me. That's Thank, you to Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Joyce Freeman and I live at Three Childs Road and I am married to this David Freeman over there um, and our pro property um, on Three Childs, as you've already heard, doesn't abut the, the house that we're talking about but we can see her house from our yard and we can also see her porch. Um, when we moved into Three Childs Road, we thought our children were going to Cape Cottage Farms, and of course they didn't go to Cottage Farm School. We also, when we moved into that neighborhood, um, did have businesses, but the businesses haven't changed. Um, used to have a library at the firehouse. We used to have, as everybody probably remembers, a blueberry patch. We used to have a barber shop. We used to have a beautician. And there used to be a real estate office. We used to have Kelly's Fish Market. We used to used to have Jones's Pharmacy. Yes, we had businesses there. Yes, we walked to them. We walked to the cookie jar and we're thrilled that that's coming back and the smells and the aroma and everything else. However, 
when she looks out and she sees businesses, that's fine. She looks out, she sees these businesses. Yes, we see them, we use them. When I look out my front yard, I see children playing in a neighborhood. That house with, that Mrs. Dinsmore lived in for years, she was a deer. And in fact, she's probably rolling in her grave right now thinking that something may be going into her home, which has nothing to do with what we're doing. However, it is a lovely home. It's a beautiful home. A lot of money has been spent on it, and we appreciate that. But this is a neighborhood. We're not talking about, if some of you ever read the story, the, the little house, a house that over time has been taken over with businesses all over the place beside it, and finally the owners pick it up and they move their house out into the country. Well, the Madisons aren't going to be able to pick up their house and move it out into the country. The Freemans aren't going to be able to. And neither are the Janingas and neither or any of the other families going to be able to move out if that house becomes a business. We have, she has had one long-term tenant and she has had other short-term tenants come in and leave after a week or two. They have had parties where they're sitting out on the porch and it is beyond the nine o'clock that you were talking about for this other situation that you have here. The woman that owns the three tenement house, or three family house, lives in the house. And my sense is that makes a difference if you live in the house and you live with your tenants. And she has also been a very good neighbor. I honestly don't see any need why this house needs to be changed into a business. Thank you very much. Tara Bucci for Kettle Cove Road. And my house is right here, and I'm concerned about one Crescent View Drive. I'd like to turn this around a little bit. And let's say that I moved into a business district. I bought a house in a business district. I met all the local business people, I talked to them, I got to befriend them, and then one year later, I said, I don't like this business district. I want it to be residential. I want to change it for my needs and wants. Would you allow this to occur in the business district? Would you even ask the businesses to change their ways of living and their lifestyles and their livelihood? And that's what you're asking us to do in our neighborhood. Um, I'm also a teacher here in Cape Elizabeth, and we teach a lot about community building. We actually have a new school song all about community. Our community at Kettle Cove in Crescent View is a neighborhood community. How do I know this? Um, when my husband and I first moved in, we did all our work on our house. We were out there with hammers, nails, working nonstop. We were welcomed by the neighbors. We were given gifts. We were brought food. It was a neighborhood. It is a neighborhood. They've shared expertise, people lending a hand to build things in the backyard or to help you out if someone's sick. Or what if there's a sinking boat or a lost pet? Our neighborhood comes together. We show care and concern. A local lobsterman's wife, a lunch lady, broke her ankle. We're bringing her meals at night because we care about our neighbors. We celebrate gatherings and graduations for families, weddings, children, and birthdays. I also want to say that we're not respecting others when we're not listening to others in our community. And right now I want you to know that the people at Kettle Cove and Crescent View, View neighborhood do not want a residential area turning into a business, business district area. We want to remain a neighborhood. And that's what you're hearing from everyone else here today. We want to be a neighborhood. There are many options for business. Let's not bring them inside our neighborhood. We can have them in business districts, but let's not change an actual neighborhood to make it a business. Because that is a slippery slope, and we will all be ch changing our lifestyles to businesses and not have a neighborhood where we're safe. I'm concerned for many children in this area. It's a busy area already, and I'm concerned for safety of transient people coming and going as they please, new people every night. Who's going to be looking after our kids in the neighborhood? Who's going to be able to let them play? Where are these cars going to go? Let's keep it a neighborhood area, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Gail Schmader. I live at 511 Ocean House Road. My property abuts the access road area to, um, next to the New Ingalls property at 515 Ocean House Road and is approximately within 40 feet away from Rudy's property. 
Um, I'm very concerned about some of the changes proposed in the BA zoning overhaul. I would also like to ditto that everything my colleague Tara Bucci just said. Um, I think she's right on, and I hope you can hear that. I don't want anything that resembles a bar or a tavern any night of the week. This is not compatible with a neighborhood. I live in a quiet, very respectful neighborhood with children and people who care about each other. This town is working very hard to control substance abuse among our youth. Let's set an example as a town. Actions speak louder than words. I don't agree with the increased hours of operation for restaurants from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday through Thursday and 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights. It's too late. This is in a neighborhood. I, um, I don't agree with three nights of the year set aside for a 12.30 restaurant closing. It's not necessary for the vitality of the business, and it creates a hardship for the neighbors in the adjacent neighborhoods. It's too late. I don't want any outdoor seating allowed for restaurants in the BA, and I especially don't want any alcohol served outside. The overhaul plan suggests allowing outdoor seating until 9 p.m. This severely impacts the quiet, abutting neighborhood. 9 p.m. is too late to have our neighborhood restored to peace and quiet. I don't feel as though the planning board is advocating for those of us who live in the RA district. My neighborhood is made up again of quiet, hard-working people and their families. It's important to me that we retain our quiet, respectful character. In defining a restaurant, the overhaul document states that alcohol shall account for less than 50% of total sales. I think the alcohol sales need to be tallied for specific time frames, perhaps 6 a.m. to 11 a.m., 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., 4 p.m. to closing, just for an example. The alcohol less than 50% sales stipulation needs to be applied to each individual time period on a daily basis. I'm not sure what you have in mind when you state that and how it will be um, monitored. I don't like it that Rudy's looks very different on Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. than it does from 4 p.m. to closing. On those days, there is limited turnover of patrons from the 4 p.m. to closing. Unlike the good table, where there is a regular turnover of patrons throughout all hours of operation. Sight and sound buffering between businesses in the BA and residents in the adjoining residential neighborhoods need to be a priority. As I understand it, the overhaul only addresses sight buffering for abutting properties. I didn't see any mention of sound buffering. Maybe I missed it. My home is separated from Rudy's by approximately a 40-foot wide access road area owned by Mr. Ingalls in the BA district. Technically, I'm no longer an abutter to Rudy's. I feel strongly that the buffering provision needs to be expanded to include the adjacent neighborhoods and or residential properties within 100 feet of the properties in the BA zone. I'm also concerned that metalworking has been added as an acceptable use in the BA neighborhood business zone. I don't agree with this. Metalworking is a very noisy business. Even though the ordinance states that the metalworking needs to be done in a building, there are no guarantees that the building will be soundproof and that the doors will remain closed. The business is not compatible with an RA neighborhood. I'm opposed to changing the wetland setback from 250 feet to 100. The Cape Comprehensive Plan focuses on the preservation and expansion of open spaces. This setback change has no positive effect on the environment. Once we diminish this land, we can never get it back again. It feels like it's in direct opposition to what we want as a comprehensive plan for the town, open spaces. Actually, the regional biologist states that a formal vernal pool study should be part of our environment assessment. This hasn't been done, and I realize it can usually only be done in the spring. This wetlands area next to Rudy's has been identified as a focus area of ecological significance. We are encouraged to minimize impacts on these resources. I support keeping the wetlands set back at 250 feet. Please, help preserve our quiet, respectful neighborhood. No establishments that, remember, that resemble <coughs> bars or taverns. No outside seating for restaurants. No serving of alcohol outside. No increase of restaurant hours. No metal working. Thank you very much. Thank you.
My name is Fern Orr, and my husband Jack and I have lived at 505 Ocean House Road for 51 years. And I just want to ditto everything Gail has said. I'll take advantage of your offer to say ditto. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Hi, my name is Mary Jean Mork. Um, we had submitted an email. We live at 4 Ocean Avenue, and I quite honestly can't tell you if we abut or don't abut one of the properties because it, the process is relatively unclear to me. My understanding is that one Crescent View Avenue is one of the properties potentially being uh, discussed as an expanded... You know, I system. have to explain to everybody, it actually isn't part of the... BA recommendation at all at this point. So that wouldn't be extended, the business would not be extended to that? Right now, no, it's not in the submission that, in the information that we have proposed making to the planning board, okay, well, to the town council, excuse but me. But we did specifically request comments on that issue tonight. Yes, we did. Although it's not part of the planning board's recommendation, we did ask for comments. Okay. Well, we I asked for it because the, the owner of that property has made a number of presentations. And however, at the last planning board meeting, there was a vote about whether or not to include the property in the B and B, um, I can't remember exactly how we said it. It was a, in, a vote whether or not to, to include it in, in this. Oh, district. in this discussion, it was, uh, it was voted. It was voted down. Would There's, you like comments or not? Yes, guys? please. We've had a lot of comments okay. on emails about it. Right. Our concern is we do about the mm -hmm. the rear the rear side of that property and. Um, and there's been clearing that's gone on there, and it could be a parking lot. I don't know, uh, because I don't know what the plans are, and I don't know if they'll be allowed to do a bed and breakfast. And this process has been confusing enough that I'm concerned that I might not know in the future what their plans could be. Meanwhile, it's right next to our backyard. It, there's a fence between their yard and our yard. Could that be a parking lot, bed and breakfast up to nine rooms? I don't know. And I'm concerned about hearing about that and at what point I, I get to talk about the ramifications for us as neighbors. I agree, there are neighborhoods involved. There's Crescent View, there's Kettle Cove, and there's Ocean House Road. We all are connected to that large property, probably historically connected to that large property. So anything that happens in that house is going to affect all of us. Um, so I'm just looking for clarity in the process, notice of any kind of changes that would occur to that property, and then, as tonight, some ability to speak about that. We certainly want you to speak about that, but at this moment, that is not part of the package of the recommendation, of the recommendation that would go to the town council. And so that would be a residential property. Thank you. Uh, please do speak about it. We've had a lot of emails about that. Um, my name is Marguerite Prentice, and I live at 18 Ocean Avenue. And I also object to making one Crescent View um, a business property. Um, and I guess at this point, since you're unclear, well, I'm unclear <laughs> about um, how much comment you would like. Um, Just brief comment about it, because as I say right now, it is not part of this proposal to go to the town council. Okay. Well, basically, my feeling is that, that, that the person that purchased that property did purchase a residential property. And I think he should be responsible for that decision. And I don't believe he should turn to the town and say, okay, now I want you to change the rules. And I also don't believe he should turn to his neighbors and um, ask them to accept the intrusion of the business. It really does have a neighborhood feel down there. There are lots of children, lots of pets, and um, I think a business would be a detriment to that area. Um, and uh, furthermore, I purchased um, my home on Ocean Avenue in that area in reliance on the residential status of all those homes there. And um, I would view it personally as a gross favoritism to take the views and the needs of one person over the views and needs of everyone else in that area. 
So I hope you will not make that a business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, I'm Marie Mercero of 17 Charles Road. I'd like to ditto uh, the sentiments of the Freemans tonight, and I object to the change in the um, zone on Shore Road. Mercero, M E R S E R E A U. Good evening. Um, my name is Mike Duddy. I live at 11 Crescent View Avenue. And thank you for all your time and effort put into this. I'm here to speak in, it, uh, in anticipation of maybe something being done with 1 Crescent View Avenue. I would oppose extending the um, BA district zoning boundaries to enclose. Uh, to incorporate uh, One Crescent View Avenue. It is part of the neighborhood. It should stay as a residential part of the neighborhood. I'll speak more if it ever comes before you again, but I would certainly oppose expanding the zone to include that property. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Dan Fishbein, Salt Spray Lane. First of all, I want to thank you all for doing what you do. I know you're all volunteers. There are actually no tax dollars involved. Um, I, I have a few comments. One is um, it, ap it appears there is a desire in the way things were written and even discussed around the BA districts to specifically facilitate in many different ways the expansion of businesses in those zones. There was some discussion around the need to provide more space for business. We have a lot of empty space in the town center. It's not full. So I'm not sure I under, understand that objective. These are neighborhood business districts, which you've now very nicely and effectively defined as such. So that should create a balance of objectives between neighboring residents and the existing businesses that are there. I think there should be proposals that support the existing businesses there in the kinds of uses that they are in today. But there needs to be equal support for the neighboring residences. I don't see that. I see. Um, reducing wetland setbacks, enabling expansions, potentially adding properties to the district, allowing expansion of use, broadening the uses, expanding hours. So it seems like there's not a balance. The objective was clearly to expand businesses in these zones, expand the size, use, hours, etc. Where is the balancing approach for the neighboring residents. It doesn't, it doesn't appear to be there. It appears that r nearby residents are asked to sacrifice quality of life and their property values to enable businesses in those districts to expand and improve the values of their properties. That doesn't seem appropriately balanced. There, there's a, a second issue, is I recall back when this process began a number of months ago, that the town council requested that three things come to them together as a package. One would be the, um, the rewrite that you've prepared here. Another would be an update to the wetlands provision related to the BA district, which, which you've incor incorporated. And the other was explicitly a bar and tavern ordinance, which was directed by the town council to be a separate town-wide bar and tavern ordinance. I don't see that here. I see one sentence changing the definition of a restaurant. And that is not a bar and tavern ordinance. And that's not, quite frankly, a serious effort to protect neighborhoods from bars and taverns. What you've written here would allow an, uh, an establishment to have 80 seats, outdoor seating till 9 p.m., daily closing time of 10, Friday and Saturday night 11, um, serving patrons potentially who are standing up, 50% of total sales from alcohol. So for example, uh, something could function as a restaurant in the winter and purely as a bar in the summer. Or as a restaurant three or four days a week and as a bar three or four days a week. Or as a restaurant for half the day and a bar in the evening. You have nothing in here that addresses those kinds of issues. If you're serious about what I've heard mentioned a number of times, what you want, that what you want to enable is a restaurant that serves drinks, you haven't done that. If, and I think you'll need to declare yourselves this evening. If you leave this as proposed, then it's very clear that what you're trying to support is bars in our neighborhoods. 
If you're serious about it being restaurants that can serve some drinks with food, there are a number of specific changes that you could make. For example, you can impose a two to three drink per patron maximum, 50% every period, as Gail described, as opposed to 50% for the year or for even some longer time period, no serving people who are standing up, no serving patrons who are not seated eating a meal. None of the things I've just described would interfere with a restaurant that wants to serve drinks. So if that's what you want to support, put in those kinds of provisions. But if you leave it as written, then we'll know clearly that what you're recommending to the town council is that we should have bars in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Colleen Brazel, and I live the corner of Shore and Charles on 579 Shore Road. Um, I oppose the rezoning of uh, 553 Shore Road. Um, it was a residential uh, home when it was purchased. The owner has never lived in the home. Um, did do a great deal of fixing up, which is much appreciated. Um, her comment tonight of looking out her home and seeing the fire station and the cookie jar is correct, but if she'd walk on the side of the porch and look out, she would see all the neighbors. Um, it, I, it's short-sighted, um, and, I, and I really feel it was bought with the intention, the real estate agent that sold that piece of property uh, was involved with the rezoning the, um, the, the plan. Um, it was intended to be sold uh, with the future of it turning to a commercial piece of property. Um, and again, I oppose it. I, I hope that you, you consider um, all the neighbors that have come out tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, Don Kennel from uh, 142 Two Lights Road. And I, I want to talk about two things. I want to support Colleen's comment there that, that the that house uh, should stay residential. But I'm going to make a very unpopular comment. I think I, sh I am in support of uh, Rudy's actually um, expanding its hours and having an outdoor area. Um, I think it's a, I don't think it's a bar. I, I've been there quite a bit. And I think it's a very friendly, open place for people that enjoy food and, and drink. Um, three weeks ago, my, uh, um, my girlfriend wanted to celebrate her five-year uh, uh, no cancer uh, thing. It's a big deal. And a big washout weekend. I couldn't have a party at my house, and, and Mary extended it to us. We had people come from pretty far, and they all had to leave very early, nine o'clock. That was a cutoff, and I, I thought that was pretty crummy. Um, and you know, uh, Christine had a really good time anyway. But that was—I I think we could be a little more open with this. Anyway, I, have to, I can't talk about it anymore. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Carl Best. I live at 12 Pondview Road, Cape Elizabeth. Um, I, I'm not really sure where to start. I know I only have a brief amount of time, but um, I, I'm a little perplexed at, at looking at the option of applying downtown business uh, district rules, regulations, amendments toward uh, the BA zone. I think it's quite backwards, actually. Uh, I think it's two different separate topics altogether. And I'm a little perplexed also about the, what seems to be a lack of development here in the middle of town, uh, where I still see a lot of, you know, we have seen some new things with Jonesy's, but that, in my mind, uh, is just more of the same, frankly. Uh, and rather, there seems to be a push to, to try and shoehorn businesses into the neighborhood areas. And what we've seen up to this point, and I can tell you by, from experience, is that, um, you know, while we all like to, to live here and we like to be proud of our, our our homes, our surroundings. Um, you know, that's no, that's no mystery to anybody here in Cape Elizabeth. It's one of the benefits of living here. However, uh, for me personally, I can tell you that from experience, that's been somewhat undermined by, by recent developments in, in our BA district uh, area, uh, of which I'm in a butter. And I would just hope that what I've heard tonight about the amendments is encouraging, but I would hope that uh, you stress more so than ever, the, uh, the neighborhood-friendly aspect of things in your planning. Uh, there is not, not enough being done in terms of uh, screening 
for abutting properties, uh, not only for noise, uh, like the gentleman mentioned, there's various types of pollution, not only noise, but for lighting, um, for parking lot areas, um, and, uh, and for traffic. All of those things are concerned with people like myself, with families, with young kids. Uh, everyone in my neighborhood goes to bed relatively early and gets up uh, very early as well. So uh, the prospects of, of outdoor seating, even till 9 o'clock, is, is a little iffy. One thing that hasn't been brought up at all that I haven't heard is any provisions on entertainment licenses for businesses within the district. Uh, how is that going to affect noise levels? Uh, so that's a big concern with myself, too. So. Um, you know, again, moving ahead, I just hope that, uh, you know, that, that we have an opportunity to do things right, and I hope we can look and see how we've done things up to this point and make some improvements. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Scott Irving, uh, 27 Crescent View Ave. And just wanted to take a minute and just state my opposition to changing 1A to a business uh, zoning. Uh, a lot of it's, you know, it is the neighborhood characteristic would, which it would change. It would, there would be a lot of people going from there as they attempt to find the beach down through the neighborhood. It, it is a dead end. There is no road to the beach or any of that. There are a lot of kids, so there would be more traffic on the block as they do that. There's already a few cars. Every You can sit there and watch the ones that come through. They're looking for the beach. And you know which ones they are because they look kind of confused. Uh, the 1A is also directly across from the bus stop. It's in the afternoon when the, again, you know, people not knowing the neighborhood are coming in looking for the place. They're going to be going right through where the kids are coming off the bus. So, we, you know, again, we're, we're mixing it in. Uh, it's going to make the parents in the neighborhood a lot less comfortable. I don't have to worry about that. My kids are old enough to have their own kids at this point. But uh, for the other, you know, it is a family neighborhood, and it's one of the nice things about the neighborhood. So I would strongly urge you to... Uh, not change that zoning. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Duddy and I live at 11 Crescent View Avenue. Um, I want to speak to this evening regarding the expansion of business districts in Cape Elizabeth and I understand, I'm concerned about one Crescent View Avenue and I understand that the current proposal does not include an expansion to one Crescent View Avenue. Um, if it should include that in the future, I would strongly oppose it. Uh, there are many reasons why I would oppose it, and to quickly summarize them, uh, I want to agree with what Tara Bucci said this evening about purchasing uh, property in a neighborhood, putting your heart and soul and your money into that uh, home with the expectation of raising a family, raising children there, only to find out that there's uh, some proposal to fundamentally change that. We do have a strong community uh, ethic in our neighborhood uh, from everything that you can imagine, including Monday night football groups that roam from house to house every week. Um, and for me, most importantly, uh, I'm concerned about traffic. The number one Crescent View Avenue immediately abuts the bus stop. Immediately. The children walk right up to that intersection of uh, Kettle Cove Road and Crescent View Avenue to wait at the bus stop. Uh, we have children from the age of six uh, for kindergarten through high school age that wait there. Um, my children have been walking out to that bus stop since my son was in kindergarten. Um, and I do think that uh, the increase in traffic that would happen if that was a business district would be significant. Uh, and I'd be very concerned about that as an observer, as a mother. I can tell you that for years we've had a problem with uh, drivers uh, who have blown through some of the stop signs there and have caused a, a panic for parents waiting there, in my case, with a two-year-old and a, you know, a, a three-year-old and a five-year-old. So it is a concern that I have. The traffic is a concern that I have uh, that I think that would need to be addressed. Um, I know Tara's uh, home immediately abuts the, the home in question as well, and I know that uh, that would be a concern for her as well, uh, if I can be so bold, that we would have cars coming in and out of the neighborhood that we didn't know. So I know that as an owner, I didn't, I didn't um, buy into that, and I, if it should come before the board at some point in the future, I would be back here to strongly oppose it. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mary Page. I own Rudy's of the Cape, located at 517 Ocean House Road, Cape Elizabeth. Um, this has been a long journey. Uh, we've done everything that has been requested of us to, in order to have this wetland setback initiated. For people to think that we are not a community place, not a community center, are extremely mis informed. We do a lot of donations, a lot of when your kids come down and fall off their bikes, when your dog's lost, when someone moves into town and is looking for someone, um, a builder or a plumber, when the firemen need coffee and muffins, when they're out on a run all night long, when the snowplow guys are out. People, we need to realize this is a community. This is a community business. This place was built in 1963. A lot of the people here probably remember Ed and Rudy, Bob and Priscilla, and the owners, so on, so on. We took a business that was closed for about a year and a half, reopened it, and made it better, made it what it is today. And for someone to think anything, buying a home next to a business zone, was going to change, they shouldn't have bought their home. Why we made the changes we made is because one year ago, we came into the town council to ask for a beer and wine, a liquor license to sell from our store. They had given it to us. We had gone through the steps of the state, did everything that was needed, got the proper, proper licenses and paperwork. The town had given that to us. We did that because Jonesy's was opening, turning into a convenience store. How many convenience stores do you need in one town? Not many. Right now there's three, two and a half. That's why we made our change. And that has hurt our business because Jonesy's did open. Serving beer and wine with your dinner, which is what we do, has kept us alive, has kept us afloat. And people need to realize that we're not a bar. We're a neighborhood place. We, oh, it always has been. It always will be. And for anybody to think it's anything different is I'm sadly mistaken and, and need to really take a second look at it. But in regards to this wetland setback, again, we've done everything requested to us by the, by the councils, by the planners, by everybody. And we hope that uh, this is really taken a good look at. Thank you. Thank you. Please, if you're going to repeat what everybody else said, please, only something that's new and different. It's now 9 o'clock, and the planning board's supposed to be. We've got to now discuss this. So unless you have something new, please just say ditto to everything. Thank you. I'll try to be unique and witty. <laughs> My name's Catherine Miller. I'm 7 Crescent View Ave. I realize that the board is charged with the task of establishing business district in the BA zone. But during this whole entire process, one Crescent View has permeated the discussions, whether it was part of the bed and breakfast discussions or whether it's now part of the rezoning and It is not lines. part of it at this point. But it has been. We've asked for comments last time it was here. In June, I attended a work session in which you talked about whether that should be rezoned. What I'm here to say is simply, we'd like some closure as a neighborhood on the Crescent View property. It keeps permeating this discussion. It's probably wasting your time, and you don't want to discuss it. But I think as a neighborhood, and the number of people here outspoken to tell you, we don't want this as a business zone, we don't want this as a bed and breakfast, this neighborhood needs closure. So I ask you, as part of your discussion tonight, guide us so that we don't have to keep coming out and petitioning and bothering with the letters to you if they're not needed. If Crescent View is off the table, please tell us. Thanks. Right now, it's off the table. Yeah. <laughs> it's off the table unless somebody brings it up and brings it back on the table. This, I mean, I don't want people to, be, uh, to misunderstand. The planning board is an advisory body. And, you know, the same people who have advocated for and against one Crescent View Ave are going to speak to the council as well. 
So I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to aggravate anyone. I, I just don't like people to be to misunderstand what the process is. There is still the council review of this, and they will be making whatever changes they deem fit and have another public hearing. So unfortunately, there is no opportunity for the planning board tonight to lend closure to that particular <clears throat> issue because it's beyond their authority to do so. The, when I say it's off for us, from everything, unless somebody here is going to bring it up. It's not in this package, and we've had overwhelmingly negative responses to it. So I, I, I can't imagine that anybody here is going to bring it up, but we'll know as soon as we can close this public hearing and have a discussion. Again, please, only new things. Thank you. My name is Joseph Foley, and I reside at 511 Ocean House Road. 511 Ocean House Road is a residential property that abuts Davis Point Lane, the new building at 515 Ocean House Road, and within full view of Rudy's of the Cape, all of which are in the BA zone on Route 77. I do have something new for you. These should be thrown out, all of them. I attended most of the workshops, as you know. I saw the violations in the workshop. I saw you allow a business owner to talk in the workshop in violation of the rules. I saw you allow a resident to talk in the workshop in a violation of the rules. I would strongly recommend that you start new, throw these out, and that all future workshops should be held in these chambers and should be televised so that all the residents of town can see what happens. With that request being made, I would like to express my opinion on some of these proposed amendments. The introduction on the memorandum from the town planner to the planning board dated September 16, 2008, makes mention of the overhaul of the BA district zoning and remake it as a neighborhood BA district. A neighborhood business district to me would incorporate respect and integrity for the abutting and adjacent residential properties. These proposed amendments do not properly address the respect nor the integrity of the surrounding residential neighborhoods. These proposed amendments would allow an establishment to have outdoor seating, service, or other organized gathering until 9 p.m. It would also allow establishments to be open between the hours of 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and until 11 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays plus allow three nights a year for an establishment to stay open until 12.30 a.m. This proposed amendment shows no respect nor integrity for the immediate residential neighborhoods. The BA zone on Route 77 currently has a business that has employees who arrive for work prior to 5.30 a.m. in the morning. Customers who arrive prior to 6 a.m. in the morning. And on three nights of the week, customers who stay after 9 p.m. and employees until after 9.30 p.m. Now that we have shortened daylight hours, the outside lighting of this business and the headlights of the vehicles entering and exiting this business permeate the adjacent residential neighborhood. The hours of operation that I'm in favor of are from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m., Sunday through Thursday, 6 a.m. till 9 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. I am not in favor of any additional special nights or hours, nor of any outside seating, service, or other organized gathering by this business or any other business in the BA zone. I have observed the following behavior in the parking lot of this business. Public urination, loud and obnoxious behavior, Unsupervised children running around <clears throat> making loud noises for up to 45 minutes. Numerous vehicles left idling throughout the day. Vehicles leaving the parking lot at a high rate of speed, squealing of tires, and honking of horns. I do not consider any of this behavior to be that of a good neighbor. Where is the respect for the residential neighborhoods? I'm not in favor of the maximum height of buildings to be 35 feet in the BA zone. We have a new building at 515 Ocean House Road that is 35 feet in height, and in my opinion, this building is totally out of character in scale with the surrounding residential properties. 
On page 12 of your proposed amendments, it states, a well-articulated building that is larger in square footage than adjacent residential buildings may be comparable in scale. What does this mean? Who gets to define what a well-articulated building means? It seems very subjective to me. I believe a maximum height of 25 feet is much more appropriate. Again, where is the respect for the residential neighbors? I'm not in favor of rezoning any current residential properties to BA properties, whether that's in Shore Road or in Route 77 BA zones. This appears to be spot zoning to me. And again, where is the respect for the residential neighbors? I thought the town council also wanted the planning board to come up with some guidelines for bars, taverns, and pubs. I don't see any such guidelines in these proposed amendments. Unless that is what you are defining on page one under restaurants where the sale of alcohol shall account for less than 50% of total sales and no more than eight seats at a counter shall be provided. 50% of sales win. For an hour, for a day, for a week, a month, a year, what is it? Doesn't define it. And who would review this sale of alcohol? I will offer you my opinion. No, 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 no. No bars, no taverns, no pubs, or any other such establishment that should be allowed in the BA zone. Again, where is the respect for the residential neighbors. I am also not in favor of reducing the wetlands buffering. To me, this is in direct opposition to what the comprehensive plan of the town that wants to maintain open space. Once you allow usage of this land, it's gone forever. As I have observed the planning board and the town planner throughout the workshop process on these proposed amendments, it was very clear to me that these proposed amendments were being developed for the benefit of a few businesses in town and to the detriment of the surrounding residential neighborhoods. Again, where is the respect for the residential neighborhoods? I would welcome the planning board and the town planner to develop new proposed amendments for the BA zone that will incorporate respect and integrity for the residential neighbors. These new amendments should include sufficient site, lighting, and noise guidelines along with mature buffering that will be needed to protect and preserve the residential character of the adjacent and surrounding neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wants to say something different who hasn't spoken? Well, my name is Andrew Ingalls. I live in Shore Acres. Andrew. Andrew Ingalls. I own the building at 515. I bought the building from Joel Fitzpatrick after it went through site plan approval. And I want to thank you all for the work you've done. It's, uh, it's a very difficult process, obviously. I don't have uh, many points other than one of the key elements is the density factor. Reducing the density of multiplex housing is important in my project. And that I want to bring more residential units into the building I have. It talks about dropping it from 15,000 feet to 7,500 feet, which is important to actually increase the residential component to that building, which to most of the people that spoke tonight will be just adding that much more of a residential element to the property there at 515 Ocean House, so that's important. And also the only other point I wanted to make was the reduction in the BA, as you spoke about, I think is a, a good idea. I'm friendly um, with the, some of the folks that did the, the actual uh, well and delineation, the Woodlawn Alternatives, and just in a casual conversation we're talking about the advantages of of bringing the sewer down, like Maureen talked about, is very advantageous. It's much more harmful to have have uh, septic systems in those in those zones than it is the, sh the watershed that goes off that. So, if you can encourage those businesses to uh, join, it, it hook up to the sewer as a result of that, I think it would be beneficial to the environment as well. Thank you. Thank you. I know everyone's sleepy. My name is Carl Pearson. Uh, I live at 27 Fowler Road and actually uh, have an option to purchase the Jordan Sloan Garden site, which is now the Cape Sands 
uh, cooperation and location of my businesses. Uh, I just wanted to, first of all, as I put in my letter, uh, thank you all, and there's the deepest respect for your time and energies as a formal uh, town councilor. I know that the pay is wonderful and the hours are lousy. So I do respect you for that. I'm also going to respect your request that we limit our comments to three minutes, and I'm also going to respect everyone's desire that everyone be community members and work together as a community. And sometimes that means some inconvenience, getting out at different hours, different times, and sort of going over the same issues time and time again. Uh, we're planning for a future, and that doesn't come in one statement. No one has the right answers. Uh, hours of operations, what we do at our businesses, a lot of this is covered by our regular zoning and ordinances that govern how we live and work in our own houses. So I think that if everyone truly wants the respect, that you respect the efforts here and everyone's different opinions and what we're trying to do in our lives and livelihoods, uh, as far as, you know, the drinks and everything and hours of operation and all this, there's a lot of minutia there that, you know, I can personally tell you that my crew spend more than 50 or $60 a day at Rudy's, and maybe on a Friday night I might spend $2 on a beer. So if you want to balance out hours, I said, you, you, you nitpick in there. I think the biggest thing is just respect. I'm not going to rehash what I put in my letters. I've spoken with you guys. I did want to make one point, too, and clarify, too, because I'm not sure if I might have been one that at one of your workshops did talk as a business owner. Uh, but it was at your request because sometimes during workshops there are questions that come up that the workshop participants would like to know some more information so that they can make informed, well-informed decisions. So I think that's part of respect and working as a community. We're all here together, guys. Let's get along and have a good time. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great night. Hi, I'm Jan Corey, and I live at 493 Preble Street in South Portland. However, I'm the personal representative of Richard, the estate of Richard Taylor, which is at 509 Ocean House Road, which is within 140 feet of Rudy's. Um, I, uh, the property that we own here is a two-story cape. Talking about the noise that generates from Rudy's parking lot, it might bypass the Schrader's but it comes right up to the second floor of our building. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, I think Mary, owner of Rudy's, had mentioned that uh, her place is a restaurant. And that as far as I know, the last thing I knew on her outside sign, I think it says pub or tavern, and some of the advertisements I've seen have also described it that way. Thank you. Patrick Babcock, uh, 503 Ocean House Road. Um, I will keep this brief. Um, I'm a recovering alcoholic, and I own a business that um, specializes in the long-term rehabilitation of men in recovery from drugs and alcohol. So I kind of fancy myself an expert on the topic. And when someone suggests that perhaps we're mistaken, that there's not a bar in Rudy's, I'd like to maybe revisit what we would all define a bar to be because last time I checked from my own experience, there is a bar in Rudy's and it seems to have gotten through on somewhat of a wink and a nudge and I question the appropriateness of how that was installed in the establishment and as much as our country seems to want to be clamoring for change, 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 it really appears as though our neighborhood in the surrounding area on 77 right around Rudy's has been clamoring for months, almost a year now, that we would prefer not to have that specific type of change where there would be a bar as it is there with the potential of expansion for further bar activity in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who hasn't spoken who wants to say anything? If not, I'm going to close the public hearing. Thank you. Uh, Okay, you want to take a five-minute break? All right, we're going to take a five-minute break.
All right, we're calling the meeting back to order again, please. All right. Loading now. We need to discuss the points that are contentious and see what changes we think should be made and recommended. And maybe we can move this on to the council if we can get through this without too much angst. Based on what we've heard from the public and, uh, I, I mean, I've listed the things that I think are the most contentious, but I don't know how you all want to start. I'll just name the things. Hours of operation for restaurants, the whole restaurant definition, uh, the alcohol, and I guess it isn't very clear, the wetland setback, uh, the expansion to the BA district for 553 Shore Road, the, um, I, I actually think the screening is probably fairly well defined in our, in our site plan review and, and some of those definitional things about what can and cannot be, but we can talk about that. And then the setbacks um, for the BA district, which we have recommended, well, not recommended, we have discussed reducing. So does anybody want to take a stab at starting on any of those, or do you have a better way to do it, or what? Well, you got the list, I guess you pick one. Let's just go down the list. Well, go ahead, Peter. Go ahead, Peter. You're about to say something. <laughs> How many times have we heard this? Three, three or four times? Yeah. I guess I, I'm, I'm, starting to re I'm very reluctant to start micro right. analyzing these ordinances at this stage of our process. I mean, this is the, either the second or third public hearing we've had on it. We have numerous workshops. Um, it's not a perfect set of recommendations, in my view, to go on to the town council. But for good or bad, unless somebody has some strong feelings about particular ones they want to revisit, uh, I'm just not inclined to reopen the discussion to every single one of these points. We've been through them all already. We, we, we took our votes. We put this out there. And I personally, except for one minor issue, which is the, uh, the, the property on Shore Road that's in, but I was on the fence and I'm still on the fence that it maybe should, be, it should stay uh, out. Um, at this stage of the process, it might be best just to let the town council have the package as we see it. And, and, and take the testimony that we've heard. And, and it's, I don't like everything in this. I didn't like everything in the bed and breakfast, but it, it, I guess I'm at the point where, as an advisory body, it's time to move on. That's my opinion. I agree that it's time to move on, but I think in light of some of the things we heard from the public, we need to, to make some decisions about a few things that we may or may not want to change. I think there's been overwhelming um, response to 553. I think there were a number of people who spoke about the hours of operation on the restaurant. The other things maybe just a couple of people said, and we may want to leave them and let the, the town council deal. But I think when you have a public hearing, if you don't at least consider some of the things that some of the public have, have said in terms of the discussion afterwards, then we're not listening well I'm, enough. I, make no mistake, Barbara, I am not saying I'm not considering those at all. I, I am, I am con, con, I've considered every single thing. It's just, uh, it, at this point, we are an advisory body. I, I hear all of the concerns. Um, if you want to open up any one of those issues to discussion, I'm happy to have it. Well, I think we should, but I don't know how everybody else feels. I really think we should. Well, I mean, I, I don't think we have to belabor it and spend a lot of time on it. I think we can just say, okay, should we change this? Let's vote on that particular change so that Maureen has the exact direction to go in, and uh, let's move on, and let's get this done tonight. And okay. Just, Mm -hmm. Go on down your list as far as... Okay. Well, let's, let's take perhaps a cut and dried one. The um, expansion of Shore Road with 553. We've had a lot of negative response, both the in emails present, and... The present proposal, as we have it, is to add that into the BA yes. zone. And we had a discussion at the workshop on that. We had at least one of the public hearing on it. We went back to a workshop, and here we are today. Yes. Okay. So I'm saying... I was unprepared for the amount of negative response, but um, probably that's just the way these things kind of things work. And when it's up against the wall, that's when you hear from people. Um, but, yeah, based on the negative response, I guess I'm my mind is changing. So, other people. 
Well, the one thing I want to keep in mind, I think tonight we had an overwhelmingly negative response from the people who live immediately adjacent. Right. But I think part of our role as a planning board is to think about this for the town as a whole. And the comprehensive plan did say that it was the decision of the town that we wanted to create viable businesses in the town. Um, and I actually drove around that neighborhood two or three times today. And to me, it's looking at it not from the perspective of the, of the immediately adjacent neighbors, but more broadly from the perspective of the town, if we are going to expand business opportunities, that seems to me a logical one. And I'm not completely stopped by the idea of a slippery slope. A slippery slope is only slippery if you allow it to be. And I think each time anything like this comes up, we have to take a very careful look at it. And the other thing I think about is a, a view that was not represented tonight, but actually was represented at the earlier forum we had on the BA zone, gave a very different perspective about that strip of Shore Road and its value to the neighborhood. There were many people in the neighborhood who came and spoke very positively about the values of having a viable business district there. We didn't hear that voice tonight, but I think we have to remember all the voices we've heard in all the public hearings we've had. So although you know, it's, it's pretty powerful to hear all the abutters come out tonight, I think that's not the only thing we need to, to take into account. So I'm really undecided on that one because for some, from some perspectives, I think it makes sense for the town to include that lot, but for our ordinances to be very clear about buffering. And one of the things I noticed today is, you know, when you think about buffering and when you think about facades, particularly in some of these areas, we need to think not just about street frontage, but we need to think about the rear of the property because that's what people see from their yards, not only here, but this also applies in 77. So I guess my inclination at this point is to leave it in. Um, I'm sure it will come up against the town council and, and they may make a very different political decision. And, and, can I go? Yeah. Um, I uh, agree with Elaine. I, I, um, I expected a lot of um, opposition tonight from the neighbors because I live in that neighborhood as well. Um, but I prefer to leave it on and then let the town council wrestle with it. I, I guess I would ditto that, to use the phrase we're using tonight, but I also uh, remind folks that uh, we do have performance standards in these businesses. I mean, the positive that sort of leaked out and even some of the immediate abutters' concerns were they wanted walking businesses. And I thought we spent an enormous amount of time trying to craft regulations that would accommodate that. Yeah. And that's the other reason I'm inclined to leave it in. Is it perfect? Uh, uh, I don't think so, but uh, again, I, at this point on that particular project, I'm 55, leave it in, 45%, take it out, let the town council handle it, and that's on that particular one. So I guess the, my motion on that would be to uh, leave that as, as we have it drafted presently. Okay, well, let's just take a vote on it. I'll just say a couple of words. Um, I would probably take that. Are we supposed to take motions in all oh, of these things? We'll, we'll make a motion. I think oh. we'll this one. Oh, let me take a second on it, and then we can... I'll make my statement. Peter, you made a motion I'll, to leave I'll, it in? To leave it. I'll second it. Okay. Do you want to have some discussion? Uh, I, no, I just, it, does anybody have any discussion? I'll just make a really quick comment. Uh, my inclination would be to take it out because there was such overwhelming negative response to it. And several people about Crescent wrote what I thought was really hit me over the head and I hadn't thought about. That once you incorporate something in the business district, and somebody else comes along, they can use it for any purpose. They have to come in for site plan review if it's more invasive. And that really spoke a lot to me about how the property could change. That because one owner says they're going to do X, Y, Z, doesn't mean they can't sell the property. So I would say take it out, but let's call for a vote. All in favor of leaving. Um, the motion is to leave it the way it is. Leave it the way it is. Which is in. Which is in. Raise their hand. In favor. Okay, and I stand alone, and I <laughs> take it out. That's fine. So it will stay in the ordinance. For the recommendations. Uh, for the, excuse me, it will stay in the recommendations to go to the town council 
553 will remain as it is. Let me clearly say that unless a planning board member brings it up, one Crescent View is not included in the business district. I say it for those of you who've stayed this long and for anybody who happens to be listening, it is not part of anything that will go to the town council. Whether somebody brings it up again, I have no idea. But at this very moment, it is not part of it. And if we can get through this tonight, it will not be part of the package that goes to the town council. So for the current time, it's not in. All right. Um, let's go to... Setbacks, is everybody, one or two people mentioned setbacks. Is everybody happy with the setbacks, mm -hmm. including the buffering? And I, the screening, do we have enough screening and buffering written into the ordinance? I, I think we put quite a bit in about landscaping around and landscaping next to a butters. I think there's some, um, I think there, and that a lot of people don't understand that just about anything you would want to do in that district would trigger a plan site, board, plan site plan review, and you have a lot of opportunity to require buffering through the site plan regulations. You also have the opportunity to regulate noise and lighting through the site plan regulations. So I think we probably covered all that and don't need to vote on that. Okay, so there are two more things. One is the wetland setback, and the second one is um, the hours of operation. Let's deal with the wetland setback first. Uh, Works for me. The, well, also the comprehensive plan recommendation was that the wetland setback because we discussed it there and felt very strongly that if any changes a business wanted to make any changes that they would have to um, comply to, to, to planning board review and also that they would have to be put on sewer and public sewer and public water which we all thought was a good idea and I guess we all do too so we don't need to discuss that anymore Okay, let's talk about the definition of a restaurant. There was a lot of response about that, and we need to look carefully at the abutters. I don't have a problem with the way we have it now. Uh, Maureen, I have a question. There was a gentleman who said we were tasked with three things, and the third one he mentioned was we were supposed to draft a, um, I'm not sure what he said, but a restaurant in A bar. tavern. Or yeah, an ordinance, another ordinance? We threw that out because... I, well, if I may, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I don't, I mean, I, I had conversations with the town council chair. And yes, a bar tavern type ordinance was drafted for the council to look at when they decided to recommend that the planning board deal with this issue as part of this package. But I do not believe that the planning board was specifically told to draft a separate ordinance. Okay. What you were told to do was basically to deal with the issue, and I don't know if you remember, but you actually did a survey of other suburban communities to look at what they did with bars and taverns, and basically they had nothing. So then we had to look at Portland, which isn't comparable to Cape Elizabeth, but at least they had some regulations. You looked at that as well, and, and your final landing was to look at this restriction on how much of the total sales could be um, from alcohol. You also looked at um, limiting the out, outside events. Um, you looked at limiting number of seats and the hours of operation. So I think you tried to get at some of the bigger symptoms of the issue, even though you didn't adopt a specific bar and tavern ordinance. Okay, so I have a question for the rest of the uh, plan board members. What was everybody's, uh, I guess, assumption when we came up, came up with the language of less than 50% of total sales, was that daily or annual? I don't think we defined it well enough. I think That's we, our discussion wondering. was annual, though. I think we were thinking about an annual. In my mind, account. it's annual, too. I wasn't right. thinking by the hour, by the half. But nobody's going to keep track of that. <laughs> yeah, by the or hour. the number of drinks. Well, but there is a problem. I mean, I, I can see the problem. What? Well, the problem would be if you have. Um, you know, fifty percent of your sales are limited, and then f on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all you do is serve beer and wine and liquor, and Monday through Thursday you give people a little bit of food, but you can average it out so it's fifty percent. I can see where a butters would say that's not a very good definition. I'm troubled by it at this point. I didn't think about it really when we discussed it originally. I never thought about that perspective. 
And, 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 and I, you know, one of the reasons we have public hearings, I think, is because we don't think about everything. And sometimes people bring up things that are really important. And maybe our hours are too long. I mean, if I lived next door to that, would I want somebody carousing out of there at 11 o'clock at night or even 10 and during the week when I had to go to work, at, get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work the next day? I'm not so sure that I would. So I understand how we may have been a little bit, a little bit too, in my mind, too free with the hours. Um, the, other, the other thing I'd like to say is I don't have a problem if we don't, and I, don't, I think we limited any outdoor entertainment. We said no outdoor entertainment after 9, after 9, yeah. after 9 p.m. Um, Plus we have a sound ordinance if there is outdoor entertainment, right? Well, yes. what you did is you limited no outdoor activities of any kind after 9 p.m. I mean, right, not just, bar, activity, not just bar and restaurants. It's right. any outdoor. And, and the right. entertainment, I believe, I believe that they would have to obtain an entertainment license from the council. Right. Um, and I, I apologize if I'm wrong in that, but I think, you know, we, we kind of covered that. And I do understand that you want to look at the hours, but I just want to remind the board that when you were crafting those hours, you were looking at more, you were looking at another business in the Business A district that already has the hours that you have proposed to be put in the ordinance. Another what, good table? Yes. No, the good table is closed at 9 o'clock. I guess the one, one thing I would say, Barbara, I'd give us a little more credit for thinking through some of this, these issues, because I actually recall we did discuss these issues in quite a bit of detail, and we discussed to what extent we felt that it was practical as a town <coughs> to monitor the activities in a business. And we didn't want to impose a kind of accounting requirement that was a huge burden on a business and in any event was beyond the realistic town enforcement. And that's why we came up with the 50% one. And it was 50% on an annual basis. Um, so I actually think that you know a lot of these things we did think about, um, and in the workshop, we had differing opinions on the business hours, and I guess I, for one, was always troubled by the 11 o'clock, um, and I was outvoted on that. I think now we've heard a lot from the public about that, and I would again urge that um, the, the, the weekends be limited. Uh, the, the, what we're balancing here is business viability for a restaurant, which is one of the things we're charged with looking out for, and you know, the livability of the adjoining neighborhoods, part of which we can address by noise ordinances. But I would again say that I think 10 o'clock is late enough whenever. Um, but I do think that if we tell a restaurant that they have to be closed before 9 o'clock during the week, we're seriously compromising their vi business viability as a three meal restaurant. And I don't want to do that. So, I'll, so I, I think that if, if we want a restaurant to be viable, that to say not just that the last order is taken at 9 o'clock, but we're really saying that the business closes at 9 o'clock, I don't think we can really have a viable restaurant if we cut back on, on that part of it. Um, I do think we should specify that with the 50%, we mean, an, we mean you know, calculated on an annual basis, and perhaps also consider saying that Alcohol can only be served at a time when meals are also being served. I don't think we can say that nobody can come in there and buy alcohol and not buy food, because then I think we're there beyond the enforcement, the realistic enforcement standards, which I think doesn't make sense. But, but to say that alcohol and food, that food must be available for service at any time alcohol is served, I think that might be a reasonable. Is there a state reg on that anyway? I, I don't know. There's lots of state regs, and, mm. and I, I also heard, and I, I don't, I think it depends on what kind of license you get. So I can't give you a specific answer. There's like 12 different categories of if you want to serve alcohol, what type of establishment you have. Even for restaurants, it's like class one through class whatever. But one of the, I, Can I add one more thing to your uh, comment before? Right. We, the ordinance we got from the town, we did get an ordinance, and I looked at it today before I came here. And it said that
that a bar or a tavern is a restaurant where more it is a, an establishment where more than 50 percent of the revenue comes from the ser service of alcohol. We said no to that. We said no bars or taverns as it was defined by the ordinance that the town council proposed. So to say that we just ignored that town council request is in fact not correct because the ordinance they talked about used that same definitive standard that we used and we said there aren't going to be any of those places in Cape Elizabeth. So I, I think we need to remember all of those discussions and I think that's, you know, there are lots of ways to do definitions but I think that's a fairly reasonable one and, and one that we can hope, hope to enforce. Just to, to follow up on the whole enforcement, I did, I also heard the concerns about the opportunity to sell large quantities of alcohol in brief periods of time and be able to counteract that over uh, an annual sales period with the lunches that you sell. Uh, I think uh, there was a suggestion to try to calculate it based on time periods. I remember our discussion that we would basically be making a, re a request to the state to come in and audit the books. So I think that any effort to try to monitor sales over a period that's less than the annual year is, is going to be impossible to enforce. If the planning board is concerned that, that the way it's drafted right now could be abused, one of your options is to account for that by reducing the 50% to a lower number. Yeah, I was just going to suggest that. I'll make it 40% maybe, and then you have to sell more food. I would that. be reluctant to do that without having some more discussion because I mean, right. one of the things, again, that we're charged with you know, we, we don't want to make a business that's not viable, and I quite frankly don't know how much what we all would consider a restaurant that serves alcohol, how much of their revenues come from food as opposed to alcohol, and we did get some input from people who have that knowledge on the 50% level, and they were comfortable with that. If we're going to take it down another more percentage, I think we need more, more information. Did you get any information about that at all? All I did was check the 50%. Okay. Barbara, maybe um, we should go with Peter's suggestion, which is to go with what we've got, uh, recognize that it's, it's not perfect, related to you know, the 50% versus 40 or 60, and the hours of operation, and let the town council again. Well, I'd like to vote on the hours of operation. So sure. We get that if we want to reduce them a little bit. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we, um, that the hours of operation be from 10, let's see, from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. on weekends, which I guess is Sunday through Thursday. No. Not you. During the week, it's 9 p.m. and during, and on weekends, it's 10 p.m. Um, so I guess weekends is right. Friday and Saturday till 10 p.m. and otherwise, 9 p.m. and that on the alcohol we specify that it's not more than 50 percent annually. So you want to cut back on the hours that places can be open then? Correct. And add the word annual or not the word but the revenues annual? Yeah. I think, I, I think you should have two separate motions. Okay. Yeah I agree. Let's do the first, let's, why don't, I'll, I'll make the motion on the hours. So it would be open from the hours of 9 p.m. Uh, what I'm proposing is subpart A on page 5 of our, subpart A uh, on uh, uh, J. J. J, okay. On page 5 of our draft, establishments shall not be open to customers between the hours of 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Sunday through Thursday and between the hours of 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Fridays and Saturdays. Um, Does that mean we're making good table close an hour earlier now? No. No. My understanding. Well, you know, though, just a minute. They do, the last meal can be served at 9 o'clock, which means customers can be in there till 10. So maybe we just should say between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. seven days a week. Well, you can say that. I disagree, but you can say that. 
Well, I know. Yeah. My motion's going to... The motion that yeah. I'm going to make is going to stay that it was 9, nine during the week and um, 10 on weekends, but I might not get a second. No second, so I guess that one doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have a problem with the annually? We can vote on that and just... You can just do it by consensus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Annual is okay. I'll add that. I just didn't want that as part of the motion. Right. Anything else with time at all? I, I'm good for time. I'm, I'm inclined to leave it I'm fine with the time. I mean, I just think, and that's going to come up at the town council. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like we're, we're, we're spinning out with yeah. something okay. that's going to get discussed again anyway. Yeah. Well, it's just that several people did, did mention that. It wasn't quite as overwhelming as the other, but um, several people did mention that. All right, so does everybody just want to leave everything else, and should we take a So we want to change we're making is the annual, this is the revenues are annual. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, so we, we need a motion then, right? We need a motion to um, move this on. Okay. Let me see if I can... Ad lib that I, I'm a, be it ordered that based on the materials and facts presented, the BA district zoning overhaul text and map amendments uh, as modified as modified be recommended to the town town council for consideration. <laughs> I'll second. Okay. All in favor? I move that was we it adjourn. It was it was it. Okay. I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Oh, you saw. <laughs> All in favor? He just, he can't wait to the chair. That was quick. <laughs> okay. This is the latest in a while, so Mike. No, it's not. We were here till 10.